This is Twit. Hey folks, I'm Ant Pruitt. I have a question for you. How do you think your hardworking team, with a Club Twit corporate subscription plan, of course, show your appreciation and reward your tech team with a subscription to Club Twit? Keep everyone informed and entertained with podcasts covering the latest in tech. With the Club Twit subscription, they get access to all of our podcasts ad free. And they also get access to our members only discord, uh, access to exclusive outtakes and behind the scenes footage and special content like the fireside chats that I enjoy hosting. Plus, they also get shows like hands on Mac, hands on Windows and the untitled Linux show. So go to twit.tv slash club twit and look for corporate plans for complete details. How did Library Box get started? How long has it been around? <clears throat> Who's using it, et cetera, et cetera? Yep. Sure. Yeah. So Library Box was uh, a project that sort of came into my head in 2011 ish, something like that. Um, and it came from, you, you mentioned uh, earlier, the project Pirate Box, which was an early sort of open router system uh, developed by Dr. David Darts at NYU. Uh, Darts is an art professor, and it was uh, sort of late 2010, early 2011, that he developed this project, um, Pirate Box, which was a, a, a router that was a full-size router. <laughs> um, I don't actually know the model that he originally used, but it was a full-size router with like a big lead-acid battery and a lunchbox uh, powering the whole thing that he flashed with some open um, open firmware and then uh, modified the firmware so that it became a upload download local area network, right? A little tiny web server where people could connect to it locally, right? No, no other connection to the net, no broader sort of, uh, you know, uh, access anywhere, just this hyper local little network that was available for people to grab things off of and drop things onto, right? Super fascinating project, really interesting in, um, Got a little bit of press. It was in Ars Technica and a couple of other, a uh, couple of other uh, online uh, news sources at the time. And I, I saw it, and my first thought was, well, that that's sort of like a little portable library, right? That's a, sort of like a like a, a like a little little uh, you know hyper local little digital library that you can carry around with you. Um, that sort of sparked the idea, and then in uh, mid-2011, something like that, uh, a hacker named Christian Rutten uh, ported it, ported Dart's project over to OpenWRT, and, uh, which was an open source um, firmware replacement for these little tiny travel routers. So it went from this project that needed sort of a big lunchbox and a full-size router and a big battery and like, you know, it was quite a little package that you needed uh, with this hat, with the hack that Chris, Christian put together, um, you could run it on literally like a $30 travel router. And these are, these little boxes are not particularly common anymore, but in 2011, they were fairly ubiquitous. And these were originally designed, uh, the ones that were mostly used were by the company TP link and they were, originally designed as little travel routers that you would take with you to the, the kind of built in purpose uh, pre hacking was that you would take them to a hotel and plug them into the physical ethernet right in the hotel room because hotels at the time still, you know, many of them didn't have Wi-Fi, public Wi-Fi. And so you would plug the uh, plug the uh, Ethernet cable in, and it would give you in your room a little local Wi-Fi signal that you could you know bridge over to the to the Ethernet. And so these little travel routers though ran uh, just a you know a tiny little Linux kernel, and uh, when flashed with OpenWRT, you could get in and you could customize the interface, you could customize what it did, and you could really sort of get in and dig around in the guts of the thing. And so in 2011, late 2011, Christian uh, ported Pirate Box over to these routers 
And that was when I said, ah, <laughs> okay. Now we went from something that was a couple hundred bucks to something that was $30. <laughs> and uh, I started messing around with it. And so the first thing I decided needed to happen sort of to convert it from a pirate box to a library box was um, libraries are one of one of the things that makes a library a library is that it's curated, right? That there are experts who sort of look at their community and decide what the uh, needs are, the information needs of the community are. And so it's not just anyone can bring a book in and leave it, right? That's a, that's a different thing. Uh, it's not a library, uh, if that's, if that's what's happening. And so, uh, I wanted to go in and strip out the sort of upload ability to take the pirate out of pirate box, more or less, mm -hmm. and then customize the interface to just make it more friendly for, um, users so that when someone from a library went to uh, try and install this, that the the result was something that was just sort of easier, right? Like it re reduced the friction of the user, make it easier for people to uh, to to install, make it easier for people to um, to to use when they when they discovered it and that sort of thing. And so I went through, created a bunch of documentation change the install procedure a little bit, uh, customize the interface, remove the upload ability. And uh, that really was sort of the 1.0, sort of the test version of the, uh, of the project. And we, we, you know, went, went a long way after that, but uh, that was the, uh, that was the, the sort of, you know, or, 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 or origin story of the, uh, of the thing.